All right. So um, I was explaining to you all that it's like the uh, instruction manual given to any thing that you buy to your houses, fan, TV, right? So without knowing the instructions properly, if we go to tackle it, what happens? You all only said it breaks, it won't function properly, you will have a lot of issues coming up. Okay. So similarly, Life's instruction manual is what? Bible. Yeah. We say Bible. Holy Bible. Correct. We say Holy, Holy Bible. Right. So it is that important for us to know what is in the Holy Bible. If not, what happened to the fan? What happened to us without knowing why we were created, how to, you know, how to live, what to do, what not to do. So all that is there in the instruction manual. Okay, right. So do, do you all have the Bible today with you all? Yes, teacher. No. Okay. If you don't, don't, don't have, don't bother. But I would like you all to uh, have at, at least the, uh, the small version of the Holy Bible with you all. Okay, from the next time, try to have it with you. Right. Now, why Holy Bible is so important? So, uh, Anali said, it's, it's a word of God. True, very true. Okay. So, this is the most sacred book for us Catholics. All right. You, you know, we have uh, the different types of prayer books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, out of all, the most sacred, the most important is the Holy Bible. Right. And the, this book has been translated into most number of languages in the world. So the, this is that important. And then as Anali said, the word of God is found here. Right? And this is the foundation of our faith and Christian life. So as, as, as I told you, this is the instruction manual. If you do not know what to do, how to do, well, one might think, why actually God created me? So the answer is there in the Bible, in the Holy Bible. Okay. And the Holy Bible is all about the history of salvation. And Anya, uh, well, it's like this Buddha. Now, I, I normally give a note. But the thing is, uh, this group, we don't have a, you know, the group as such for me to uh, send the note. So for the time being, if you wish to, you can take a small uh, note down. But I prefer you listening rather than uh, taking a note. Because what I'm telling you is all there in your uh, grade six uh, book, the textbook. Okay, Anya? Okay, Anya. Okay, so now it says the Holy Bible is all about the history of salvation. What's the meaning of salvation? I would like you all to raise your hand up. Do you all know how, how to raise your hands up uh, in Zoom? Yes, miss. Uh, so I, I would like you all to raise your hands up before answering so that I will see them. Okay, well, what's the meaning of salvation? Let's see, we'll ask uh, Gavin. Are you Gavin? Yes. Salvation yes. means eternal life, resurrection. Okay, right. Very good. And any other answer? We'll ask Shanuka. You're not, not clear, Putta. The... Shanuka, are you there? Right, uh, until Shanuka comes, um, oh, O'Shea? Miss, it means, uh, it, it means to bless the world. It, it means? Miss, it means to bless the world. Bless the world, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Anya? Yes, Anya. Miss, my answer was already given. 
Ah, okay, that's fine. Right. Then my own, my own, are you my own? Is it resurrection? Resurrection, okay, right. So what do you mean by resurrection? Rising again from the dead. Uh-huh, right, good. Okay, so uh, you, you, you all were right. Yes, Ahalya, yeah. Salvation means deliverance from sins. Right. Very good. Am I pronouncing your name correct? Ahalia? Ahalia. Ahalia, okay. Right. So, um, so as, as you told me, salvation is something, something amazing. You know, we sin, but God tells us there's a way out. Okay. So this is all about salvation. So it includes, yes, Jesus coming for us to this world, dying for us, and then rising up again. So resurrection, yes. Okay. So the, what, the, the, the content of the Holy Bible is all about salvation. All right? And in simple terms, it, it's about love, God's love for us. Whatever we do, how much we sin, God still loves us. So that's a simple message given from the whole Bible. Okay. Okay. Now to tell me, how, how do we call this sacred book? I think I mentioned. The Holy Bible. Um, Holy Bible. Bible. The Holy Bible. Holy Bible. Holy Yeah. Nimna, you have raised your hand. Yeah. You call it? Holy Bible. Yeah. The Holy Bible. It's holy. Okay. So make it a point. Whenever you, uh, you want to uh, talk about it, it's the Holy Bible. Right? Okay. And then, so I, I asked you all this last time. Do, do you all have a Holy Bible at home? Majority? Yes, I have three Holy Bibles. Three. Oh my God, you have three. Okay. <laughs> right. So try to ha have it somehow. If you do, don't have at the moment, don't worry. Try to ask your parents to bring a Holy Bible for you all. Okay. It's always nice to ha have your instruction manual. By your side. So that's so. Okay. Where, where do you keep the Holy Bible? I think Which I, I keep, keep it in my cupboard. You keep it in a clean. You keep it in a clean. You keep it in a clean place. You keep it in a Bible stand. Just touch it. In a clean right. place with a vase of flowers and a lighter table. And keep it in a very clean place. Flowers. Okay, right. So that's right. You know, you 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 should have a separate place for the Bible. If uh, it's all the better if you, if you can keep it near your altar where you keep your statue, Jesus' statue in, in your house. Okay. If you can make a small space for it there, that would be the best. All right. We normally do not keep it inside a cupboard in, in, in your bookshelf. No, we don't do it because it's holy. A special place should be there. Okay. Okay. So Oshen keeps it uh, on a Bible stand. That's very good. Right. So just keeping it there. Will that do? Is that enough? No. Huh? No. No. Then what shall we do? Miss, we have to keep it in a Bible stand near some uh, flowers uh -huh. and uh, near the rosaries and uh, near some prayer books in front of the Jesus statue. Yes, Oshin, correct, you're right. But what I'm asking is, just keeping it there, is, is that yes. enough? Miss, we should read it. No, Miss. Uh, we have to read it, of course, day and night. We have to read it. All right. And how, how, how do you hold the Bible? With both the hands. With both the hands. Very good. With both the hands. With respect. Because it's holy. It's God's word. 
Okay. Right. So this is all about the Bible, Holy Bible. Now I ask you all to find out how many books are there in the Holy Bible. I want to see your hands up first without answering. Okay, can I hear Rehan? Rehan, how many books are there in the Holy Bible? Teacher, there are 73 books. I, I didn't hear you, Buddha. Teacher, there are 73 books. Okay, 73. Bethany? 73 books. Evas? 73 books. Right, okay. So I, I think uh, you all know it. It's 73 books, right? Mish? And yes, Buddha. Miss, in the Old Testament, uh, Old Testament and the New Testament, are we, um, is Miss going to ask about how many stories are there in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Well, not necessarily the number of stories, but well, the number of books you all should know. I'm, I'm going to talk about it now. Okay, Pata? So, here. Now, you have two main parts in the Holy Bible, which you all know already, Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. So, what, what's the difference uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Can I hear Nehara? I, I, I couldn't ask you. I think you're, you raised your hand up. Nehara, are you there? In the Old Testament, we can find the God uh, before, uh, before Jesus Christ. And in the New Testament, we can find after Jesus Christ. Okay, we're very good, Nehara. Right? So that, that that's a simple difference. And there, there are so many other differences, but, you know, that's a major difference, right? And how, how many books in the Old Testament? You can see it. 46. 46. And in the New Testament? 20, 27. 27. 27. 46, addition 27. It comes to 73 books, okay? So uh, the Old Testament uh, would talk about uh, his, the historical incidents about God and how God revealed himself through whom? Through prophets. Okay. Whereas in the New Testament, New Testament, it's all about the life of Jesus and the first Christian church. Right? Okay. So that's about the whole Holy Bible, right? Now I'm going to talk about the Pentateuch. Do you know the meaning of Pentateuch? First five books in the Holy Bible. Okay, very good, Anya. First five, now, first five, uh, five books of the Holy Bible. Okay, right. Very good. So we are going to talk about the first five books. Now, Putala, um, sort of we are running out of time. If, if this uh, gets uh, time out, you, you all have to rejoin. Come in the same link, okay? Okay, teacher. So, as, as you all correctly said, the Pentateuch is the first five books of the Holy Bible, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. 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 Right. Right. We'll just uh, go through these five books. Now, Genesis is about all about the creation, right? How God created the world, created us. And then after that, the first sin committed by Aiden and Eve. And then the story of Abel and Cain, Noah, Sark, you know, so it goes on, right? So, in the book of Genesis, all throughout it shows us, shows us how much God loved us. In any way, the whole the Holy Bible is about God's love. 
all right and then the second book exodus it is where god saved israelites from pharaoh and then through moses guided to the promised land okay anya do you have a question or you're raising your hand up no okay then the third book is leviticus leviticus is all about, about in instructions given by god for israelites then the fourth book numbers it's about different types of kings there were so many kings uh during uh, you know uh, uh, after um moses brought israelites from pharaoh so it's it's a, about different types of kings who ruled there and finally De deuteronomy is the journey to the promised land regarding laws and instructions what moses wants uh, from israelites originally what god wanted from israelites okay so th these are the first five books in the holy bible we call it pentateuch got it and then it's called to the four gospels right do, do, do you all know about the four gospels yes miss yes teacher yes, right. yes, yes okay. teacher we'll we'll watch a small video saint matthew saint luke saint matthew saint luke saint mark saint john okay very good so you you all know, know it already but let's watch a video and then after that we, uh, i will ask you questions right okay God's story, the good news. So part of God's story is about the gospel or the good news. And it goes like this. In the beginning, God made everything. The sun, the moon, stars, planets, the entire galaxy. And earth was part of that creation. God made mountains and oceans and forests and deserts and animals that crawled on the ground and flew in the air and swam in the water. Then he made people, Adam and Eve, to live in a garden called Eden. And God called everything he had made good. There was just one rule. Adam and Eve could eat anything they wanted except for the fruit from this one tree. But a snake tricked Adam and Eve into disobeying that one rule. Because of that, sickness, sadness, and all kinds of bad things came into God's perfect creation, all because people made wrong choices. Part of how God punished Adam and Eve was by not allowing them in the perfect garden anymore. And if that were the end of the story, that would be bad news for us. That would mean all the wrong stuff in the world would never be made right. But God still loved people, and he had good news for them. He was going to send a rescuer. So, they waited, and waited, and waited. Then one day, the rescuer was born as a baby named Jesus. Christmas is when we celebrate the good news of Jesus being born. But it's not just that he was born, it's what he did later that was the best news of all. He took the punishment for all the wrong choices that anyone has ever made anywhere. See, all of us have continued to make wrong choices, just like Adam and Eve did. And just like Adam and Eve, we deserve to be punished for our wrong choices. But here's the thing, Jesus the Rescuer never made a single bad choice. Kids, think about a time you made a bad choice. Maybe telling a lie, or taking something that wasn't yours, or hurting another person with something you did or said. Can you believe that whatever that was, Jesus never made a choice like that? And even though he never made a bad choice, he still took the punishment for our wrong choices? 
And then Jesus did something even more completely unexpected. He came back to life. Really, you can read about it in the Bible, in the stories written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call those books Gospels, which is just an old fancy word for, you guessed it, the good news of Jesus coming to earth, dying for our wrong choices, and coming back to life. That's what we celebrate on Easter. But not just because coming back to life is totally amazing. By coming back to life, Jesus was showing that God can make anything new. There's nothing God can't do. He's more powerful than any sadness, shame, wrong choice, disease, disaster, and even death. And that's the best, most amazing good news of all. It's so amazing, Jesus' friends told everyone they could find about the good news. And those people told other people. And those people told other people. And on and on. And that's still happening today. In fact, you just heard the good news. And the Bible says, <clears throat> If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's another way to say God rescues us. And that rescue includes you, your friends, your family, and anyone else in the whole world. And that's the story of the good news. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect world. People made mistakes and the world isn't perfect anymore. God promised his family a rescuer. The rescuer's name is Jesus. Jesus died to take a punishment we deserve, but he didn't stay dead. Jesus came back to life because Jesus can make anything new. And that's a part of God's story. To live in All right. So, did, did you all understand what the good news is? Yes, miss. Yes, teacher. Yeah. So, yes, the gospel, yes, the, the four gospels, all four talk about this good news. Right? Now, you get disconnected, Putala. You all have to come back in the same link. All right. Right. Okay. So the, okay. The four Gospels are the first four books in the New Testament. And it's all about the good news. You all saw what the good news is, right? Okay. Now to tell me who, who wrote these, uh, the four Gospels by the four evangelists. The evangelists. Of course, right? And, and you all very well know the names as well already told me. Now they wrote about the good news. The good news the good news means Jesus' birth, his mission, teaching and also the death and resurrection. To say that we can be saved. 